Ooh, guys, got one on the jig. There's a good look at what he just ate. The two and a half inch craw on a uh, one eighth ounce bait finesse Evo jig. Oh, guys, I'm gonna have to go get it. Oh, dang, guys, a big bass on the frog. Oh, oh yeah. And catching a nice large mouth as the sun's going down. Gonna be another warm evening. We're gonna go hit up a pond though, guys. Try some new baits. Try to catch a few fish before it gets dark. Got one, guys. On the X zone still. Feels pretty dang good too. All right, yeah, dude, nice one. Heck yeah. All right, man, so no secret where we are. You guys kind of know what the deal is at this body of water, but I have some new baits this evening that I want to try out. And this is the perfect place to get on a jig or a Texas rig bite. That is a really long fish that is not eating well. Good grief. That fish probably weighed three and a half, almost four pounds a few months ago. Good grief. Oh, that fish just jumped off as I was trying to measure him, but the water's really clear tonight, guys. That's an egg zone stealth creature bait, two and three quarters um, of an inch. I got it in a tilapia color. I have it on a little screw lock hook at number two. Hopefully we're going to be able to replicate what we just did several more times this evening. That bait rigged right back up. We're ready to keep throwing. Really like that tilapia color. We got two different kinds, guys. I've got the uh, Stealth Creature. And I've also got their Stealth Craw series tonight. I have this one on a jig that's on another rod down there. Um, but we're going to throw the Texas rig for a while and then um, try to catch a few on the jig too. I just caught that fish on my Dobbins 74 Sierra with a, a Sioux Dark Wolf and 7 pound Sunline. Fish. That might be a bluegill, guys. Uh, is it or is it a bass? Nope, sunfish. That is a different kind of sunfish, so that's not a green sunfish. I think it's a, it, I think it's a red ear. I think that's like what they uh, call a shell cracker in the uh, south there. Y'all let, let me know in the comments, but that little red on his, uh, that little red tip right there, I think it's a, a red ear sunfish or a shell cracker. It wanted that little trench hog looking bait too. Y'all, I foresee that being a problem. The plastic is very soft, which is what you want for a uh, finesse plastic that you're uh, kind of using as an all else fails kind of bait. Um, so it has a lot of action, but I can't keep the sunfish off of it. And that first plastic didn't last too long with uh, the sunfish ripping the, uh, the longest appendages off of it. I think I'm going to switch over to the jig. Let's see if we can uh, get another bass to bite on the jig. Ooh, guys, got one on the jig. Nice. Evo jig and the stealth crawl. Not bad either. He picked it up ever so carefully. That tilapia color looks really cool in this clear water. They're a really skinny guy, but as always in the summertime, I'll never be picky. Or anytime, really. Always grateful for all the bass I catch, that's for sure. There's a good look at what he just ate. That little egg zone stealth uh, craw. Two and a half inch craw on a uh, one eighth ounce bait finesse Evo jig. And I'm actually throwing that jig on a little 6'6 handing magic off of Amazon with my new Suranoia Genius, which is an 8 to 1 uh, reel with 7 pound sunlight. In the summertime, this place just fills up with grass and it pretty well chokes out the majority of the pond. So I'm not even gonna mess around with that shallower side anymore. I'm just gonna come over here to the deeper shallow side and 
we're going to spend the rest of the evening here. And There's something on the worm. It's a little bass. Yeah. Little bass on the HH custom worm. Weird. Shaped like a snowman. Got a big pump body and a tiny tail. He's huge through here. His tail is tiny. Guys, I think that's a bass on the frog. Gonna have to go get him. Oh, dang, guys, a big bass on the frog. <laughs> that was awesome. How did I get that fish out from under there on six pound line? <laughs> on that uh, little Z-Man buzz toad. That is a chunk. That one's been eaten. I was just going to try to catch some of these red ear sunfish that I've been seeing around here. And I threw on that little two and three quarter inch Z-Man finesse frog on a uh, number two EWG and I caught a toad. He drug me under the tulies and had all this kind of grass wrapped up and I had to like pull him out from under there and he made his way out thankfully, didn't break me off. And that's six pound fluoro guys. I'm throwing it on my Art Gravity BFS and my Dobbins 701 C Sierra. Pretty much an 18 guys. That is a nice chunk. Here he goes. Oh, guys, another bass on the frog. Ah, dang it. Got off, but he wasn't as big, but still got another eat on that uh, little finesse frog. I thought I had a pretty good hook in that. I guess not. Uh, what is that? Kind of feels like a sunfish, guys. Yeah. Big old red ear again. Those are some aggressive sunfish, you guys. I'm not sure where these things came from because it always used to just be big green sunfish in here. And now there's some fat, reddier sunfish, shell crackers. Oh, on the jig, guys. Pretty good one on the jig. They got a lot more stuff to get you in right now. There's just grass everywhere. That Evo jig really comes through grass well though. He's not too big guys, but a bass nonetheless. I said it once, but man, that tilapia color sure is cool. It's like green pumpkin with um, green and blue and purple flakes in it. Really like that. And guys, honestly, I really like this pairing, that genius on the Handing Magic. Um, it's pretty stout. This is a fast action rod, so it works pretty well as a jig rod and a topwater rod. I'm liking that. And it's only six foot six, so if you guys fish in tight quarters, um, around trees, uh, creeks, off kayaks, uh, the little six six rods you guys know can work to your advantage sometimes. Guys. I've never, it's never been this clear for me to see before. I wish I had a polarized lens. There's an old square body truck cab right here. There's a truck cab about four to five feet below the surface right there. Honestly, something that's also deceptive about this place is that you see how far down that we sit and you'd think that like this would be a super deep um, little pond and it's honestly not. It's like 
five to six feet deep at the max, I'd say, somewhere out in this, this channel area. I wish y'all could see underwater right there. There is like a, there's like an old Chevy C10 square body uh, pickup cab right there. That's kind of spooky. Whether it was dumped in here or somebody drove it off like the cliff right there, who knows. It wasn't that long ago, guys. Somebody drove through the fence up there on the road and got right to the edge of the cliff and as they were trying to like negotiate with her she just went ahead and ramped her car off the edge of it and it ended up killing whoever was inside i think and they had to dig the car out but i guess it's not the only car that's been driven in here because there's like i said there's a truck cab right there Dude, I'm telling you, these reddy are so aggressive. They're probably starving the bass out this summer. That's why the bass are so skinny. That's a, I mean, that's just a normal zoom, U-tail, ribbon tail, June bug worm. And this thing would not leave it alone. I kept trying to get it to drop it and it wouldn't do it. So I just went ahead and lifted and he was on the hook. So red ear sunfish. On the ribbon tail guys one more good one before dark hopefully oh yeah that's awesome one more real nice one before dark on the ribbon tail probably almost another 18 inch fish got him sunset and a nice largie y'all that's why i love fishing just coming out on a super hot summer evening, throwing just a simple ribbon tail worm Texas rig finesse style and catching a nice large mouth as the sun's going down. That's how I always used to fish uh, where I grew up, guys. I would, I would normally go out in the evenings and fish until it got dark. And that was on the 7-4 Dobbin Sierra, guys, with the seven pound fluoro and the Sioux Dark Wool. A little 1 8 ounce tungsten and a Zoom U-tail worm and June bug. But we have some important stuff that I wanted to cover here in the outro. Um, just finishing the review on these uh, Egg Zone Stealth Series uh, soft plastics. The craw was pretty good. Um, I have to say, if I had a favorite, it was definitely the creature. Okay, and if I'm going to give these things like a grade in certain areas for action and realism, I mean, gets a really high mark. It's got to be like a B plus or an A minus because the appendages have a ton of action. Um, there's several, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight appendages on the little uh, trench hog style bait. And it did um, get a big bite on the Texas rig guys. Um, but I guess it might not have been the best place to do a review on these because the dang sunfish, they kept taking the appendages off of them. And if there's one big con to these baits guys it's that they're extremely delicate i had a ton of sunfish pecking away the claws on the craw bait and the longest appendages on the uh, uh creature style bait there i loved the color pattern that i got in that tilapia color and i'll give you guys a close-up of the craw one there's a close-up of the craw extremely realistic on the craw guys that's probably um the biggest pro on the craw that and another pro that these baits have they are floating guys it is a floating plastic so when you put these things on like a ned rig um, or even on the jig like i had those appendages float i think maybe the coolest find that i had tonight is a top water bait that i'm going to be able to use in like extremely flat water these little z-man finesse frogs guys two and three quarters of an inch on a number two EWG. The only thing I don't like about them, guys, is when I was throwing these, 
they would always flip over and they were swimming like that to where the hook point was on going down into the water. Wasn't a fan of that, but it didn't seem to matter. Um, that big bass killed it um, when it was like hook point down like that. But I could figure something out and maybe get it to swim to where the uh, shank of the hook is underneath of the bait. But that little frog is actually a very cool presentation. I'm glad I found that. Something else that was new in the video, guys, my Sue Genius that I just bought very solid reel um i will say the component it doesn't feel like quite as high quality as the uh, dark wolf the components honestly seem a little bit cheaper somehow even though it's pretty much the same reel just in a different ge uh, gear ratio but i don't know it just doesn't seem like the components are quite as high quality but still extremely smooth casts really well drag is good so i can't complain about it much at all and i like that little handing magic rod guys it's a fast action rod six six and it was handling those fish well with that jig. And last thing that I wanted to cover that I didn't cover on a previous video um, when I was at the river throwing these finesse Texas rig guys, I really think there is something to throwing these tiny light wire screw lock hooks. That's just a number two on a conventional size zoom U-tail worm in that it's so sensitive. The rod itself, the Dobbin 740C, is insanely sensitive. It's more sensitive than the spinning rods that you guys throw. I guarantee you, if you tried it, it would be more sensitive than your spinning rod. So you combine that with the fact that you're using very light line and a hook that you really don't have to set the hook much on. As long as you just lift and provide tension, that little needle light wire hook goes right into them. And like all of those, those really soft, mushy bites where you can just kind of see the line moving just for a second, you can set the hooks on those fish and keep them on versus like if you have a heavier gauge EWG hook. I always remember throwing conventional tackle guys and, and getting bites and being so frustrated because I'd wait for them to like get enough of the hook to where I could load up and whack them. With that, you honestly don't have to whack them at all. You can just kind of get your line tight and then you just lift and they're on. That's the beauty of it. It's really pretty effortless with the light tackle finesse uh, Texas rig that I'm throwing. Um, and I really think it helps me in the uh, late summer when the bites are a lot more finicky and mushy when they don't just thump the crap out of it. Think about that the next time you're, uh, you're having a hard time uh, getting fish to fully commit to your Texas rigs. Try those super finesse, light wire, light line, BFS rod, Texas rig, and, and tell me what you think when you try it. Measuring boards are still available if y'all want them. Shoot me an email and we'll take care of the details from there. I'm asking 35 bucks for them. But as I've been telling you guys for the last several videos, it gets you entry into the Big Bass Contest that I'll be having monthly on the channel. But apart from all of that stuff, guys, please leave a like for me if you enjoyed this one and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Talk with me in the comments below. Please share this with a finesse loving friend and help me grow my channel if you could. Thank you all so much for watching the video. And until the next one, y'all take her easy. I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, dang, guys. A big bass on the frog. <laughs> that was awesome. How did I get that fish out from under there on six pound line?